Hi everyone, it is Tuesday, April the 7th, and weather-wise, it has been a pretty nice day in the neighborhood. We've avoided, as has most all of eastern Kentucky, any showers and storms that we had the possibility thereof. Now that might not be the case over the rest of your evening. I think it will be for the most part, but we'll give you that in more detail in just a few moments and talk more importantly about the better chances for some severe weather, thunderstorms, winds, and hail throughout your Wednesday. Uh, that will be our significant threat. We're only in a slight risk category at this time, but watching as this cold front arrives very closely. A couple of arrests tonight. One in the case of a McGoffin County man who actually helped police and business owners look for the property he actually had stolen. Uh, also arrest of a Johnson County man who assaulted several different officers. We will, of course, have an update from our governor in just a few moments and a few less updates comparatively in regards to the COVID-19 virus tonight. Some other news that we'll share. Congratulations going out to a young McGoffin County woman and others. We will, um, on the COVID-19 front, have a couple of things before we get to the latest update from our governor. First, here locally. While state and local health officials believe that positive cases are sure to come to every county in Kentucky if they haven't indeed already and not just been confirmed through testing. As of four o'clock today, there was no confirmed case or cases in McGoffin County. I just spoke with Pete Shepard, McGoffin County Director of Health. He had just spoken with the Kentucky Department of Health and no confirmed cases. His office, the judge's office, our offices here at your News Today in the Sackersville Independent all being bombarded, more so the judge, his office and the mayor's office, but all being bombarded by calls mostly fueled by Facebook and misinformation that is spread much more rampant than the virus, it seems at least here locally. Nevertheless, we ask you to continue to get your information from first, our governor, and of course the website at, as he has established, kycovid19.ky.gov. We here will have an update for you everything first at 6 o'clock. I will with you as I get my update from the Kentucky Department of Health through our mayor just at around 5 o'clock. So we'll have that latest information for you. And should it be during the day or another time, we will make information as soon as a confirmation is made available to you through the Sagittal Independent and Your News Today website and, of course, our social media. But we ask that everyone rely on those and, of course, other credited news agencies for your uh, information in regards because to the COVID-19 pandemic. A lot of misinformation out there and going around, and we will do our best, I promise you, to keep you up to date as much as possible. So with that said, more on the confirmed cases for today from our governor in just a few moments. The president last evening said that the coronavirus outbreak could last well up into the summer, perhaps as long as August, an indication that the widespread shutdown was really just kind of in the early stages. Uh, more curfews, more quarantines might be, he says, needed as a nation in the future right now. Guidelines established for the next two weeks or actually 15 days where he is suggesting that those states who haven't taken it on their own to do so, such as Kentucky has, close bars and restaurants and, of course, limit social distancing, have drive through and pick-up and delivery services made available from businesses as much and wherever possible. Of course, Kentucky uh, leading that charge for some time now, but the president urging all other states to follow that lead as well. We'll get to our update from the governor in just a few seconds and the latest information as it pertains to the pandemic right now. A couple of arrests to report tonight. A couple of men sitting in the Big Sandy Jail, one being a man from Agoffa County who actually helped a business owner and police look for expensive merchandise that he had reportedly taken after breaking into the business here in Sagersville just hours before. I spoke to Philip Williams of Williams Electric just a few moments ago on the phone, and he says that they came into work yesterday from over the weekend and noticed that someone had broken into the business through the back door and stolen the cash register as well as a generator and then left on foot. He says that they actually were able to tell the direction of travel of the thief because the generator, the weight, and the size of it left a pretty good track as it was dragged from the store, through the creek, and then over towards a trailer court that sits on the other side of the creek. He says that's when they started going door to door and asking if anyone knew anything, and that's when a lot of folks actually chipped in to help. One of them, he says, was Clarence Wayne Gibson, who came out and searched with them trying to find some evidence. 
However, after some more investigation by state and local authorities with the sheriff's department, it was determined that he was actually the suspect, and after getting consent to search the residence which he had been staying at that belonged to a relative, they found the generator in a bedroom closet, and then Gibson admitted to breaking into the building and then stealing that and the cash register, and then throwing the cash register into the creek, the cash register not immediately found upon the search. Gibson was taken to the Big Sandy Jail and charged with one count of receiving stolen property under $10,000. The next arrest comes out of Johnson County, where last night around a quarter till six, Johnson County 911 got a call from a Storm Creek Trailer Park resident in Staffordsville. Sheriff Doug Saylor says that that caller reported that a man had just stolen his truck, a 1997 red Dodge Dakota, and that the vehicle was last seen traveling on Route 40 towards Paintsville, Deputies started looking for it about 35 minutes later, saw it at the BP on US-23 at Turner Branch Hill, and then found this man, 31-year-old Sean Gayhart, with the vehicle. And as soon as they approached him, he tried to run on foot and was stopped, but he did not go quietly and actually assaulted several deputies, kicking one in the chest before he could be taken into custody and arrested. He was also found in possession of a syringe that he said had crack cocaine in it, which he'd been taking all day. Gearhart was charged with theft by unlawful taking of an automobile, DUI, with aggravated circumstances, fourth offense or greater, driving on a DUI suspended license, second offense with aggravated circumstances, fleeing and evading police on foot, resisting arrest, assault in the third, and other counts. You know, almost everything is getting postponed, canceled, or just done away with for the year of 2020. One very important thing here locally is also not going to happen, and I'm, I'm quite worried, to be honest. We'll talk about that in just a few seconds. I'll have that for you right after these words. McGoffin County Heating, Cooling, and Refrigeration with professional, licensed, and certified commercial and residential service technicians that can maintain and repair all manufacturers with new and old installation and financing available. Serving McGoffin, Morgan, Lawrence, Martin, Johnson, Floyd, and Breathitt Counties. McGoffin County Heating, Cooling, and Refrigeration, 349-1058 or 225-6779. If your spring projects include gravel, rock, sand, or drainage pipe, your dollar will go farther at Tomahawk Feed and Farm Supply here in Sagersville. It's all always in stock and ready for pickup and delivery. And now there's two locations for all of your feed and farm needs. Tomahawk has the region's largest inventory and lowest prices on all pet and livestock feed, gates, fencing, and everything your farm needs. In Sagersville off 114 at red light number 4 and in West Liberty on Liberty Road behind the Ford store. Tomahawk Feed and Farm Supply. Car accidents don't stop. Accidents at work don't stop. Disability and SSI cases don't stop. Your legal needs and concerns don't stop for the coronavirus and neither does McFarland and Tinker. They are open, able to schedule appointments per CDC guidelines, and always available for telephone and video conferences. Please, be safe, be smart, stay home, and don't let your legal needs fall victim to the pandemic. Call McFarland and Tinker and let them take care of them for you. Times have changed. Now and suddenly, more than ever. Our lobbies might be closed, but the Sagersville National Bank wants to remind our customers that we're still here, we're still working to provide our community with as many services as possible. During this time especially, we encourage all of our customers to take advantage of all the options we offer to manage your accounts from the convenience of your home. 24-hour internet banking and bill pay, 24-hour telephone banking, remote deposit, automatic loan payments and wire transfers are also still available to our customers. And we're still here during our normal hours. Mondays through Fridays, the main drive through is open from 8 until 3, and the branch drive through is open from 8 until 5, and the branch drive through is also open on weekends, Saturdays 8 until noon, with ATMs available 24-7 at both locations. All Pro understands that we are all just trying to make it through these most difficult of times, and they want you to know that they're here to help with any repairs or projects that you need done. Big or small, doesn't matter. They've got 0% financing for 18 months and long-term financing if you need it. If you need anything from a new gutter to a new house or a new garage, call All Pro Gutter Works and Construction, 349-9999.
with COVID-19, a lot of things that were going to happen in 2020 just aren't going to. A lot of things postponed and definitely a lot just won't happen. That list is getting longer every every single day. One of those things that might not happen and certainly will not happen as soon as it is needed to is the single largest part of operations for the McGough County Rescue Squad. This year, this year will be the first time in the 46-year history of the squad since they started the annual media auction that it's not going to be held on the first weekend in May, what would have been the 40 First year in a row this year. There can't be a media auction this year with almost zero money in the bank for the rescue squad. And they're already working off actually a small loan that we had to take out some some just days ago. Uh, it could be some terrible news for the life-saving organization. Businesses, a lot of them just aren't open. The ones that are, are struggling. And, of course, they are the main supporters of the rescue squad media auction. And they're simply just not going to be help, be able to help as they normally do and that's getting to be a very serious issue while there is the chance of maybe getting some money in regards to the stimulus package uh, and otherwise those funds are not confirmed nor have any sign of actually being confirmed in the near future and that means that the media auction which would have been less than a month away from this point is going to be missed terribly therefore there would be much to advertise for sale so we're going to somewhere lose around $20,000, and that's about 80% of our, uh, our budget for the year. Uh, we're hoping we have applied for some stimulus money through the what the uh, uh, Trump or administration did sign into it, $2, two trillion. dollars But we haven't heard anything yet how much we're going to get out of it, so we still going to be, if we get whatever we get, still going to be way down. But we still have our bills to pay. Luckily, the warm weather, we've cut back on gas and also electric on the fans and the motors, but uh, the uh, heating of the building. So that's going to help a lot, but, you know, we still have uh, our insurance due because we do one every three months, and that's $1,000 every three months we got to come up with. And uh, then incidents on outboard motor we had to repair. You know, radios can go down, trucks can up go down, and so it don't take long to spend money, especially if you don't have it. Yeah, even if you get the 10000 it's still not going to be a solution. No, me. that's just going to hold us through for several months. Uh, maybe four to five, four months if we really get stringent with it and nothing happens that we have to repair anything. So, uh, you know, we made it through the 08, 09 recession, and I thought, you know, we wouldn't make anything, but actually those years were about twenty to $23,000. And so uh, last year was down a little bit, about 3000 so this year we're going to be really down. We've, we've been tossing the idea uh, around about trying to find an alternative. Okay, uh, and I think we ought to maybe ask the public if they've got any ideas of something yeah. along a telethon or something maybe. We're going to have him Billy Capacci here from, on Friday afternoon and Saturday afternoon. And we're thinking about Friday night for about three hours maybe having a radiothon, telethon, where people we, we can stream it. Be on, I guess be on, or I'll have to get in touch with the radio station again, but I know Harrods Cable's okay with that. So just to uh, try to raise money to supplement what we're going to, something we're going to get. And uh, it's just a very, very serious time for us. You know, uh, and, and I know that the probably other uh, emergency services throughout the state were maybe had been go, but the governor, you know, has ceased all those licensing and anything that to raise money. So, you know, we can't have a lot of people in here. We don't want, as you can see, I've got some, uh, I've actually put signs up here now that says not open to the public. You know, if you need something, please, if someone's here, just come in front door, front, if we have the bay open and tell us what you need. Uh, we're really not allowing the public inside the building because we ourselves have to be uh, careful. And because once two or three members go down, then, you know, we've lost the ability to really have an efficient response to any calls here in the county. So we'll, uh, I guess, Rick, we'll, we'll be putting our heads together and thinking about what we need to do on that Friday night. But again, tell everybody just be patient. And, you know, if you got I know money, hopefully will be coming in. And I know every dollar counts to everybody that now that you have to buy food and stuff and what the necessities of life. But we also, if we're going to continue to provide services to the county emergency rescue services that we have to be have uh, we have to have funding to keep on going ourselves 
So again, I think the idea of a telethon is a pretty good idea that Carter had. I'm still trying to structure that in my mind, how we could make it work, maybe get some uh, some entertainers to be a part and make that a televised event um, and on social media and our web page as well. I don't know. I'm kind of, as is Carter, looking for a little help out there and guidance with that. If you've got any ideas, please reach out to me and let them know. Meanwhile, if you are one of those folks who can help and help keep the lights on, the Gulf County Rescue Squad, P.O. Box 155 here in Sagersville, or give the squad a call at 349-5500. The Rescue Squad, just in the last quarter, responded to 67 auto accidents alone. Uh, number of incidents, 67 incidents alone, including medical calls, vehicle accidents, landing zones for medical flights. Almost 3,400 man hours spent on those calls. Hey, congratulations going out. Let's have some good news. It's getting harder to find. But congratulations tonight to a young McGoffin County woman wrapping up her senior year at the University of Pikeville. Yeah, this good news comes by way of Miss Kennedy Garrett from McGoffin County, the 22-year-old senior at the University of Pikeville, who first won the Student Employee of the Year Award at U-Pike and then went on to the state level where she won there as well, being selected as the 2020 Student Employee of the Year. The Southeastern Kentucky Chamber of Commerce, as well as her family and friends in U-Pike, and we here at Your News Today in the Sagersville Independent, all thrilled and proud to be able to announce that she was notified as the student nominee for this award. It's part of a national award held by the National Student Employment Association and the Midwest Association for Student Employment Administrators. She works at the Southeast Kentucky Chamber of Commerce as part of her federal work-study program and was nominated by her supervisor, who says that she is an important part of their small staff of four, all of which who work closely together to fulfill their mission of strengthening business and economy in the region. And from the beginning, saying Kennedy has embraced that culture and truly became one of them, and they depend on her in their office daily. The student employment at the University of Pikeville works to be relevant for the work students need after UPike or seek after UPike, uh, connect them with their academics and offer opportunities to grow professionally as well as prepare students for needed workplace skills. Kennedy is 22. She's also a cheerleader at UPike in her spare time and she'll be graduating in I believe December. She is majoring in business with emphasis business administration with emphasis on accounting and management. Congratulations Kennedy. Congratulations to you. Next, a brief, as they most are for the time being, but still here for you regardless, a brief McGoffin Farm Bureau community calendar. Yeah, just a quick reminder that the Water into Wine Food Pantry is open tomorrow, 9 until noon, but with a different method of operations for tomorrow in lieu of the pandemic. If you're coming to the food pantry tomorrow, write your name, big bold letters, put it in the windshield where volunteers can see it easily, pull up, stay in your car, keep the windows rolled up, air on if you got it, and they will place your items either in the back seat of your car or in the back of your truck. So just stay safely inside your vehicle. They'll take care of everything from the curbside. So pull in, pick it up curbside and then carry on, and it's going to be that nice. That's very nice of them. And it's in an effort, of course, to keep everyone safe that comes to the pantry and those who work there as well, 9 to noon tomorrow. And once again, you know it nightly. Here's how it works. If you have a calendar announcement, you want me to tell everyone, just tell me. Before I go to the break, one more little report that I want to throw in. It's not local, but it's different, and right now anything different is interesting, especially what... I suspect is going to be written up as the world's largest car fire in Florida. Check this out. Indeed, what a sight this was. And no injuries reported, but a major loss to say the least. This is a grassy field, about 15 acres I think, very close to the Southwest Florida International Airport car rental companies had been storing or keeping about 7,500 cars or so there because they weren't being rented due to the coronavirus pandemic. A fire was called in Friday first as a small brush fire. And then when authorities arrived, there were a couple of dozen vehicles on fire. In a matter of moments, it was 100 vehicles. And before it was all said and done, the last count was just a few over 3,500 cars damaged or just completely destroyed by the fire. 
about half of the vehicles that were being parked here by rental car agencies. A 15-acre lot filled with explosions and sparks and fire and billowing black smoke for about 18 hours before fire crews could get the fire under control and extinguish the blaze using about 80 airdrops from helicopters, usually reserved for forest fires, as assistance. Getting the best deal on the best tires with the best service has never been easier. Just log on to ConleyTire.net, check out the latest rebates, sales, and promotions, pick out the tires you want, and email, call, or come by. For huge savings from the family who's been proudly serving the area for over 32 years, Conley Tire in Staffordsville, 297-2424. Creekside Stitching and Feed is the place to go for all of your custom embroidery needs. Shirts, caps, jackets, and more. And they've got the best prices on value-packed dog food, blue ribbon beef mix, kick and chicken, and shell and cracked corn. And premium quality gates, hay rings, and bunk feeders, plus metal carports and garages as low as $1,400 installed. For all of your embroidery, feed, and farm supplies, Creekside Stitching and Feed. One mile up Bear Branch, off of Route 30. A message from the Fraser's Prater Drug Store and Seasonal Shop families. Prater Drug wants you to know that you can now call, use Facebook, or use our Refill RX app to get your prescriptions refilled. And the drugstore also has designated curbside pickup parking in front of and behind the store. Simply call 349-3135. And at the Seasonal Shop, they're still posting new arrivals and taking orders with free shipping on most everything anywhere in the entire United States. And they're offering scheduled curbside pickup. Just message them on Facebook, Instagram, or email at seasonalshop at yahoo.com. Fraser's Prater Drugstore and the Seasonal Shop says let's all do what we can to help and protect our neighbors and loved ones. With the power to bring us together even when we're far apart, we keep families connected. We are you. We are Appalachian Wireless. Come to Parkway Pharmacy in Sagersville and get your prescriptions filled. Your over-the-counter medications and immune system boosters all from the safety and comfort of your own vehicle, either in their drive through or with their new curbside service. You can also call ahead or just download the My GNP app, that's Good Neighbor Pharmacy, and refill and manage your prescriptions right from your device, helping you and yours stay healthy and safe. Parkway Pharmacy in Sagersville, 349-4400. There is never a good time for a breakdown. They will happen, and your car at some point is going to need some repairs and maintenance. And Black Smoke Performance is open and here with professional, fast, safe service. And just in time for warm weather, they now have certified full air conditioning, diagnostics, and repair to keep you cool in whatever you drive. Black Smoke Performance, 349-8785. Now it's time to see how Kentucky as a state has fared in the last 24 hours. A segment from Governor Bashir's update from just a few moments ago. The governor gave an update on new testing efforts between a culmination of agencies, which will soon ramp up to 2,000 tests done per day in Kentucky. New tests that will first start with our health care providers, then first responders, and then individuals high at risk, 60 and over all of which who have to have some sort of symptoms or all, fever, respiratory, diarrhea, cough, things of that nature. He also spoke briefly on unemployment. It was noted throughout the update that if you applied for unemployment, knowing that you were eligible and received a denial letter, essentially disregard it. They were trying to catch those denial letters and have since done so. You will receive your first payment automatically. They're also extending benefits for anyone whose unemployment ran out on July of 2019. You will be eligible for another 13 weeks. The governor detailing how this is a critical time now more than ever and that if we keep up our operations and our steadfast dedication to social distancing, we will save 
11 or maybe even more thousands of lives in Kentucky. And the governor issuing once again a plea with a promise to enforce no church services in lieu of the Easter holiday upon us. He thanked the 99.9% of faith leaders across the Commonwealth who are doing the correct thing, promising to have to address the others if they continue to not do so. And where folks are intentionally putting people in harm's way, uh, we're going to start taking action. Uh, I got over any ramifications of doing what it takes to protect lives a long time ago in this, and we're going to make sure. We're going to make sure uh, that we don't have 200 people coming to one place inside of one building where we know people are going to die as a result. And you know what? My faith is one of the things that compels me uh, to do that. Uh, my faith teaches me that we protect one another, uh, and when others aren't willing to do the right thing, uh, we step in uh, to protect those that might otherwise be, be vulnerable. Uh, two, 99.99% of all of our faith leaders out there, thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. I know it's a hardship on, on your house of worship financially. I know it's a hardship on what you view as your pastoral duties. I know that this has turned our entire world in every way you probably see your service to your congregation in the world upside down. But I promise you, you are doing the right thing. That you are making sure uh, that at the next um, major celebration or the next Sunday that we're able to be together, that you have your entire congregation there. Uh, so thank you uh, to all of those faith leaders out there. And please spread the encouragement. Please give voice to it. Uh, please give voice to your and your congregation's sacrifice because that positive uh, peer pressure, and, and it is, uh, will hopefully prevent others from doing something this week that we know will set us back, uh, will spike the curve, and will cause harm uh, to people that are out there. All right, today's uh, results um, are, are higher uh, than the last couple days. Uh, but remember the last couple days we were talking about the fact that we thought that they were artificially low uh, and that it was in part due to uh, some labs not reporting over the weekend. Um, so our total number of new cases today uh, is 147. Um, and, and that brings our total cases to 1,000. 149. Now, 147 is the largest number we've reported in a day. Uh, but as we look back um, at the two days before it where we thought those numbers were low and we think that some of those reports have come in today because of it, uh, our average during those three days is, is about 80. And 80 was lower than the three-day average for the three days uh, before it. So while this is a, a, a large number, and it is, uh, we still um, don't see uh, the numbers going the same way in Kentucky as in so many uh, other uh, places. So what, what we will say today is today is the largest number of cases that we have reported, um, but our three-day trend uh, is actually lower uh, than our last three-day trend, and I'm not sure many places in America uh, can say that uh, right now. Also, with that revelation of 1,149 cases came the sad announcement of seven new lives lost in the state of Kentucky for 65 Kentuckians in all, which have lost their life in part or due to the COVID-19 pandemic. No new eastern Kentucky counties were announced in his list, although sev several counties were yet to be confirmed. The only eastern Kentucky county actually was Boyd County with two new cases. Uh, the majority of the cases were out of Jefferson with 51. Fayette was next and several other counties, all of which were the majority of which, which already had at least one confirmed case. We'll wrap it up this evening weather-wise as we prepare to turn our green lights on in the lobby yet again here at your news today in the Sizewell independent leaving you tonight with your weather forecast which will need to be monitored much more closely certainly into your wednesday and wednesday night 
Yeah, a beautiful day out there today. A little more cloudy than what some folks might have liked to have seen, but it was certainly pleasant. And we have fared pretty well, not just as a region, but as a state today in regards to the stormy weather that we still could see during the overnight. But today has not been a big weather maker on that front, and that is a good thing. Tonight, now, we do have about a 30% chance of showers and thunderstorms. Really, that's mainly after 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. So it is right now your Wednesday, tomorrow, that needs our focus weather-wise as this cold front does indeed make its way through. With that said, the primary threats still appear to be wind and hail. Not a major rain maker with this, but as that cold front comes through uh, and with all the other scenarios in place, we have a pretty good chance at some severe weather tomorrow. That will warrant your observation pretty much from morning, afternoon, and on throughout your Wednesday. Shower chances uh, are, well, at a likelihood 60-70% uh, starting as soon as 8 o'clock in the morning. And we'll see possibly uh, those damaging winds maybe later on throughout the day. But as of right now, enjoy the rest of what's been thus far and should be a calm Tuesday evening. So 62 tonight, southwesterly winds still out there, 6 to maybe 16 mile per hour gust. Mostly cloudy skies will continue. Yeah, nighttime low of 62, pretty nice and mild. For your Wednesday, showers, possible thunderstorms rolling in, really starting to work their way in after 8 o'clock and throughout much of the day. And those chances will continue all the way through tomorrow night. Showers likely, possibly thunderstorms, even as late as 5, 6 in the a.m. into your Thursday as well. And lingering showers and thunderstorms maybe into your Thursday afternoon. So tomorrow is the day, like I said, to watch. And uh, we will see, of course, temperatures take a big swing. 72 tomorrow with clouds, showers, and winds out of the southwest. 74, down to 52 on your Thursday. Winds then out of the northwest, 9 to 23 miles per hour. Still showers, a likelihood as we see colder air settle in. 52, 37, your high and low. For your Friday, pretty nice. Cooler, but nice. 52, mostly sunny. We have a 34-degree night and morning thereafter uh, rolling in on Friday, which means that we also have the possibility for some lingering frost Saturday morning with an early morning low of around 34 degrees. Saturday's going to be pretty nice. Nice all in all. Not as warm as last weekend, but 61, mostly sunny. And then the next round of showers rolls in about mid-weekend. Saturday night, a 30% chance of showers late during the overnight, a low of 45. And then Sunday, mostly cloudy. Showers likely. Don't see any storms. Uh, early Sunday, but a chance of some thunderstorms later on. Sunday night to the tune of 50%. Daytime highs and lows for the latter half of your weekend on Sunday, 63 and 47. And then we'll start off next week, partly sunny and a small chance of showers and with the low 60s on your monday and i believe tuesday as well it's going to wrap it up for tonight enjoy your evening any way you can stay in stay safe and stay tuned to your news today see you tomorrow